On the Warp label, we have Tom Jenkinson's 15th LP. You might know Tom as Square Pusher. And I've been following Square Pusher for oh, more years than I care to remember. But I remember him pushing the boundaries of electronica back in the 90s. And he would twist and he would mould and he would mutate all kinds of ambient and techno rhythms. And he would use drum and bass in a wild, mad, frenzied manner. More speed drum and bass or drill drum and bass. And then he wandered off in different directions, but he sort of come back to those flavours with album number 15 using some older uh, synth hardware and older software. And he's sort of looking back in that slight retro manner on this particular album. Let me show you the album itself. And there is the LP with its shrink wrap. The only item on the front is this tiny little sticker. Now let me take off the shrink wrap and you can see inside because the cover has beautiful little cutouts. And now with the shrink wrap off, this is what I mean by cutouts. Pay careful attention, as you see here. So the actual outer sleeve is full of these little cutouts inside. Well, it's a little work of art, isn't it? Because we have these thick, high gloss prints. Let me go through a few of them for you. that's four double-sided high gloss thick paper prints and it's a beautiful package the actual LP itself comes on a paper inner it's a beautiful album highly recommended square pusher fans go get it now I want to talk about two albums from the absolutely brilliant record label silver screen both from the BBC's radiophonic workshop the first one I have two in my hands here. The first one is from Peter Howell and the Radiophonic Workshop. Let me bring that one up to show you. There's the front and on the rear and inside here's the inner sleeve. Uh, that planet by the way isn't, it's a globe. It's also a globe you pick up as a shop, that's also a globe. And on the other side, well it's just more stars. The actual pressing itself is clear. Now although this says Peter Howell and the Radiophonic Workshop, Howell was part of the Radiophonic Workshop himself, but this album is a standalone, which is why he is isolated as it were in the credits. Howell himself was asked to tweak the very famous Doctor Who theme in 1980, and that particular track was released as a single. On the B side of that was a track which you can find on the end of side two here, called Astronauts. But it's a very sort of electronic-y, proggy type of combo. Very nice indeed. Now, similar but different, there is a second Radiophonic Workshop release here from the wonderful Silver Screen record label, based in the UK, incidentally. But although this is entitled Radiophonic Workshop as the creators, it isn't a group or a collaborative effort. This is the work of one man, Paddy Kingsland, and basically he produced everything on here. The tracks range from the sort of brilliantly cheesy electronica to more atmospherically funky electronic work. And electronic is the basis of the entire LP. The tracks on here, and there are 12, I've just counted them, range from radio, BBC Radio 4, BBC Radio 3, some radio leads material, and bits and bobs elsewhere. It's a whole melange, a compilation of Kingsland's work and it's excellent stuff. Inside, well there's an excellent reel-to-reel -reel copy here of the actual front of the tape box and on the flip we have some very nice liner notes along with track information and credit information as well. As for the pressing, it's white. Next up we're looking at jazz and free jazz. A little bit avant-garde stroke bop but more avant-garde. This one is from Horace Tapscott, he is uh, or was a pianist. He died in 1999. Uh, this particular release comes from Pure Pleasure. This is an audiophile record label based in the UK. And this is the album. It's a trio and it took place in 1982 in Santa Barbara, California. 
Now, as you can see, I have the shrink wrap still on this particular copy. And as you can see, the only adornment on the shrink wrap is this little sticker here, which I'll quickly show you to camera. Now, this is a standard Pure Pleasure sticker, so nothing really out of the ordinary. The trio on this particular LP consists of Horace Tapscott himself on piano, Roberto Miranda on bass, and Sunship, that's one word, S-O-N-S-H-I-P, Sunship on percussion. There are three tracks, Sketches of Drunken Mary, Racha's New Hip Dance, and one long side two of The Dark Tree, that's over 20 minutes long. Inside you'll see this insert, which basically lists other releases from the record label, Pure Pleasure, and the basic pressing appears on black vinyl with a simple white sleeve, but the sleeve itself has a very nice soft inner to protect the record itself. When listening to this LP, you'll experience lots of exploratory and experimental jazz. If you're into Sun Ra, I think this is something you'll enjoy. This Pure Pleasure reissue was originally released on the Flying Dutchman label in 1975. It's a soul jazz release from Lonnie Liston Smith. Don't confuse him with Lonnie Smith, by the way, the bop organist. This is a different guy. Lonnie Liston Smith had a sort of, well, he had a very intriguing career. Began with Pharaoh Sanders, ended a bit later on with Miles Davis. Then he went solo and explored music of the time. So there's some funk in there and there's some slow groove soul in there too, mixed with jazz. It trucks along quite nicely and it's quite meditative. There are one or two challenging little areas in here. Most of it is instrumental. Donald Smith is included here. He adds a vocal or two, but it's a very nice, very easy, meditative, on the whole, LP. So Smith is with the Cosmic Echoes on Visions of a New World. And the record itself, which is pressed on black vinyl in a simple white inner, is inserted in this gatefold, which folds downwards like this. And there is a reason. Let me show you. It's because you get a full portrait. Let me pull it that way so you can see. Or maybe up and down. There's the man himself. Very nice. Lots of credit information in there, but uh, a nice way to present a gatefold. Next up is a Spanish audiophile label called Wawa. Wawa spelled as in the guitar pedal, W-A-H-W-A-H. This particular Spanish label, they handle a whole host of genres, including krautrock and 60s rarities and some prog, which is where both of these releases belong. Both from the same band, Attila. This particular Attila, because there's one or two Attilas knocking around the uh, musical firmament, but this particular Attila is spelled A-T-I-L-A, -A, so there's only one L on this one. They were from the sort of early 70s. They ranged from at the beginning of their life. They only produced three LPs, uh, mind you. But when they began, I would say more harder prog vanilla fudge area, shall we say. And then as time went on, a little bit more symphonic, maybe Emerson, Lake and Palmer-ish, the nice, that sort of area. So they did develop. If you're into keyboards of the vintage variety, you'll get lots in these LPs. And beautifully played, by the way. In fact, all three albums, if you get a chance to listen to them, are beautifully put together, very skillfully executed. And... What I have here are the first two albums. The beginning of the end is the first album. It's originally only released, I think, around 100 copies. If you found, let me just show you the cover here. There we are. If you did find an original copy of this, it might set you back around one and a half thousand euros, one and a half thousand pounds, give or take. And this one was originally released in 1975. The following year, 1976, was an album called Intention. Pardon my pronunciation, but this is the LP itself. This particular one, I don't know about the other one, but this particular one was mastered or remastered by Dennis Blackham at Sky Mastering, quality mastering engineer. So you know the job is a good one on this particular LP. Let me show you a little bit more inside each LP release. So this is the front cover of the beginning of the end. Also available in the vinyl sleeve is this bonus CD. It adds lots of value because it presents an alternative version of the original album. You also receive this eight page booklet inside, which is nicely presented. Here's the front and there's the back. 
lots of photos of the band and there's a very nice essay and some other notes in there too. Intention benefited from superior production which made the sound a little bit better than the debut. This particular issue is presented as a gatefold and let's have a little look inside shall we? And inside you can see it's a sort of theatrical model and uh, here there are sort of cut out figures. If you're going to be totally thuggish about it, you'd cut these out and display them here. But you wouldn't want to do that, would you? No. Pressed on black vinyl and presented in a simple white inner. You also receive the same eight page booklet. Next from the US based audio file label Mobile Fidelity is a new Miles Davis release. Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. As you can see here, let me just take this out of its shrink wrap. This particular album is available as a gatefold and arrives on two discs that both run at 45 RPM to enhance sound quality. This is the front and the rear, full of liner notes. The orchestration is looked after by Gil Evans and here is the inside of the gatefold itself. Pressed on black vinyl, each disc is wrapped in one of these in-house mobile fidelity sleeves which show other company releases and then the black vinyl itself is presented in a typical mobile fidelity in a plastic sleeve. Now obviously Miles Davis works his magic on this particular release as do his compatriots people like Cannonball Adderley and Paul Chambers and so on but I would say that Gil Evans is the core of this particular piece just because of his innate understanding of the music itself. And that's it for me and another vinyl news Catch the next video, I'd love to see you there. Until then, bye bye for now.